On today's episode, we're building aluminum fender flares for my Suzuki Samurai. So luckily the front and the rear fender flares are identical. So all I have to do is make four identical of these and uh, they just go right on. So you can see here how I've got it designed. They're just gonna sit on just like that. And that's where the front one's gonna sit. They're just an opposite. And the back one here is just gonna sit something like that is where it's going to sit and that should help stop the breaking of the mirrors and it should help stop the mud flinging everywhere i get into the littlest mud hole and this thing's covered in mud and i can't see where i'm going and whatnot so i'm going to show you guys how to bend these up and the trick to bending aluminum 6061 aluminum as soon as you try and bend it much more than this or even this it cracks every time but there's a trick to bending aluminum and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. It's super simple and anybody has this tool in their house. So let's get to building these bad boys and we'll get them installed. I'm waiting on some other parts, some riv nuts to show up before I can really install them, but let's get to making them and I'll show you guys the trick. So 6061 aluminum, when you try and bend it, it cracks. Seems like every time in a, in a tube form, flat sheet is fine. It, it seems to bend fine, but in a tube form, it always cracks. So last year when we were trying to bend the aluminum on the jet boat, it would crack. And then I remembered this old technique to anneal this aluminum, because right now it's kind of in a stressed, kind of a hardened state, if you want to call it that, and you need to anneal it. And the way you do that is you heat it to a certain temperature and then let it air cool. And then that anneals it and the way the simple way that you know when you hit the temperature is by smoking it with a candle and i'll show you guys that here in a little bit you basically smoke it you get it all covered in soot then you take a propane torch and you heat it up till the soot disappears and there you're at your temperature you let it air cool and then it bends no problem no cracks so i'll show you how that's done so all you gotta do get your candle going Set it somewhere handy, like there where you can see it. And then we're just going to smoke these. It's a pretty neat technique. I can't remember where I, I learned it from. It would have been in a fab shop somewhere back in the day. So we're only annealing these spots here because that's where the tube is actually going to be bent is in a four inch radius so i mark out a four inch section of pipe and that's that's just where it bends so let's smoke this other side and then uh, i'll show you how it disappears so, so basically you just get your torch going and you heat it up until the smoke disappears you'll see for whatever reason, it disappears at the right temperature. I don't really know the answer to that, but you'll see. And once the, the soot disappears on the pipe, you're at the right temperature. And then you can let it air cool. You might even be able to see it in the video, the soot disappearing already. So there you can see how the soot disappeared. Now I'm just gonna continue to do these other three spots. And then while this is cool, I'm gonna go soot, soot up the other pipe and then we'll be ready to bend. Okay, now the pipe is cool enough to handle. I drew a center line down the entire length of the tube on both sides. You can see I marked here and here. That way you have a reference line. 
We're just gonna slip her in the old bender. And the first bend is not super critical. So I basically just put my stop bolt right at the end of the tube. Okay, so the first bend we're gonna put in there is gonna be a 70 degree bend. And this bends really nice and easy after that tubing's been annealed. I still like to go gentle with it. So as to try not to crack it. But it should be good now after being softened up. Our next bend comes in at 12 inches. That's what I got the 12 inch mark here for. And I put the 12 inch mark right on the end of the die corner right here. Put the old angle gauge on there, make sure she's straight up and down. And this one here gets bent 50 degrees. Now you have to remember when you're building this, that there's a left and there's a right side. Right now, we're building one of them and the other one's gonna have to be built opposite. So this bend here will have to go down. And then to get 50, we go to 52. And we slack off, stops at 50. So there's two degrees of rebound in this basically. So there's the one side. Now here's where it can get tricky. We want to do an opposite bend of this one, right? We have a, a say a left fender, we wanna do a right fender. So we're gonna need to have this bend the opposite way. These bends here will be the same but we need this arm to come out this way. So we're gonna compare what we're doing here. If that's down, the way I have it set in the die right now, should bend it the other way. So I'd say that's just the trickiest part. You build one, that's no problem. To build another one, the opposite can be a little tricky. Just pay attention to what you're doing and make sure your bends are opposite and you'll be fine. So I'm gonna bend this one out and then we'll be ready to tack on the sheet. So here I'm just doing this by eyeball, trying to hold this straight up and down and trying to run this straight with the saw. And I just keep taking a little bit off. And then I go line it up with that, the flat sheet. back on the welding table. So I put that flat. I bring this sheet up. And what I do is I compare. I bring this to the, this edge here to the line, the center line on my tube. And then I compare and you can see it's still a quarter inch high here. So I'm gonna go cut another quarter inch off this piece here. Okay, I think I got her now. I'd say that looks pretty level there. So now we'll start welding. Okay, so I've made a mark on here and down here and those go on the corners. And I want it square, flush to the back. And then I'll just throw a couple tacks in it. This should be all square, yep. That's an eighth inch away there. Now we want it an eighth of an inch away here. So we'll just pull this a little bit. And now we basically just bend it down. Just like that and we repeat the same for the other side and then for the other fender well and we cut and trim. We get to cut out the wheel well, and we're basically done 
You drill a couple holes in here, throw some rib nuts in the Zook, and we're done. So I'm gonna just finish welding this one out. So now that we got the fenders done, they're time to mount. And I've got the other three mounted already. I'm just gonna show you the front ones are a little more difficult to mount. And uh, I've got it where I like it. She's level across here with the top of the fender so it looks proper. And I'm just gonna throw a few marks just so that if it moves, I know where it used to be. Just a couple of reference marks. Just like that. I've got it held by a vice grip clamp here. And basically I'm going to drill a hole here and install a rib nut. Then I'll drill a hole there and install a rib nut. And then I can mark out my wheel well to cut it out. So bolt in there so it can't move. And my new mandrel works awesome. And you gotta love Amazon. They dropped off a pack of 100 rib nuts for me today. So that's handy. The other three bolts up top here will get fender washers behind just for a little extra support that the rib nut will hang on to. But these ones here that you can't get to, they're on their own. So let's mark the inner fender. And there's our mark. So we're gonna plasma out as close as possible to that line and then I'll grind it out so it's nice and smooth. So you can see I've got this line marked out here. I'm gonna take the plasma cutter and just cut a slit in there. I'm not cutting it out. I'm just cutting a slit because this actually needs to bend in compared to this top surface and I'll show you why. So this lower rib, if you wanna call it, actually sticks out further than the upper fender. So you'll see if I just try and bolt it straight on, you see how it just, no matter how hard you push, it just doesn't come to touch the top of the fender. So we'll cut that slit. That'll let that basically bow in and uh, it'll look good. So I'm gonna slip this and then put it up here, refit it, put a couple more rib nuts in. Once, once it's in place, then I'll tack weld it, that slit, I'll tack weld the slit and I'll TIG weld it shut. Now that'll just push tight like that. So we will uh, put a couple of rib nuts in. All right, you can see it's like, uh, it's probably about an eighth inch out or a quarter inch out more than it used to be. So now I'm just gonna take the welder and put a few tacks on it so that the, this layer here sits up higher and stays up higher. And then I'm gonna weld it solid with the TIG welder. All right, so we got the uh, fender all welded up. And the gasket is on. Time to install it. There it is, good and solid. So that concludes the old aluminum fender flares for the Zook. Hopefully now it won't fling so much mud and stop breaking my rear view mirrors. So if you guys are enjoying this content, go ahead, subscribe, share, like, hit the bell to be notified. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Fabin underscore adventures. Look in the description below to a link to my store where you can pick up shirts and hoodies, help support the channel. And we'll catch you guys next Friday. <laughs>